Welcome to Warp Curry. My name's Gator Patel. And I'm Yogi Patel. So next week, we have a really special guest. And uh, at the end of this video, uh, we're going to give some clues as to who that guest is. Uh, what we'd like is for you to get to the end of the video, of course, and in the comments, see if you can guess who that person is. Uh, the person that's the closest, or if by chance somebody does guess exactly who that guest is, we will give them a shout out in the next video. But first, we have some breaking news. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. And with that vote, the House of Representatives has decided to require TikTok to separate from its China-based owner ByteDance or be banned from U.S. app stores in six months. Supporters of the bipartisan bill cited national security concerns, arguing that the Chinese government could force ByteDance to hand over the data of its 170 million American users, something that TikTok has long denied. The bill now heads to the Senate, where it's unclear whether it will pass. President Biden has said that he would sign the legislation if it reaches his desk. All right. Um, a ton to unpack here. Uh, there's definitely some interesting takes we could uh, consider on this. Interesting thoughts. Um, what are your thoughts first? So first, uh, I mean, I've been kind of watching a lot of the, the news about this, but uh, uh, first and foremost, I have TikTok, but I've never posted a video, barely even use it. Um, you know, for me, the main thing has been Instagram and uh, other social media. But I know um, a lot of people use it, the younger generation, obviously, um, a lot of businesses. So I, I think it's going to be very impactful as to what happens to, you know, everybody else that uses it. And, you know, if this was six, seven years ago, I don't think it would be as big of a deal because um, at that time you didn't, I don't think the monetization, you know, the making of money was as big on any of these platforms as it is now. And so TikTok, as far as I know, is one of the biggest used platforms. One reason is that, you know, it's not from the U.S. And so it's uh, allowed technically in a lot more countries, although it is also banned in many countries. And so um, the number of users on TikTok is a lot higher than almost anything. And, uh, you know, we, we came up with this topic, obviously, because of the uh, the news that came up. But it, it, it's going to affect a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we'll go into why uh, it's going to affect so many people. But what, what's your initial thoughts, at least? All right. So for me, it comes down to basically, you know, three things. Um, my opinion on it. I think it is good overall. Uh, that's what I feel that should have happened and did happen. Um, now, the main reason is trade. And other podcasters or other podcasts have come up with this already, and they've kind of highlighted it. And I'm just reiterating, reiterating what they already said. If China doesn't allow U.S.-based social media apps in their country, then why should we allow Chinese apps in our country, right? That to me is like fundamental. Typically in more traditional trade situations, it's always a give and take. Um, in this situation, um, I don't know whether it's because it's uh, technology related or if it is a software thing or whatever the case is, but we don't have those same rules in place when it comes to trade. So for number one, uh, so my number one reason for agreeing with this is trade, right? The second thing, um, again, I don't know if this has been proven or not, but there's a ton of articles um, that allude to the fact that the content in China is very different on TikTok versus the content in America on TikTok, right? And it might be related to free speech and, and whatever controls they have in place. Um, but nonetheless, from what we've read, it's a very positive experience for children and, and teenagers and everyone in China when they're looking at their TikTok feed. Whereas in America, it's a very... More, for the most part, it's more of a negative experience and there's more um, content that might hurt someone, you know? So I think, sorry, I think you might have answered potentially your, the question that you were asking, which is, uh, or the, the trade issue, which is why we have something from China and why China is not allowing some of the apps that are uh, made in America. Uh, and you kind of brought it up in that last part, which is, because of, and this is my theory of China being a communist country, they're protecting what goes out to the general public, right? And so my guess is that 
Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, um, whether it's there or not. But those things are, and, and I'll be honest, I've been on Facebook recently more because of our podcast um, just to help market it. And the amount of people following back has become ridiculous. But let's say 20 people a day out of the 20, I feel like 15 to 18 is just junk yeah. or you know, unnecessary followers or scammers or whatever. Um, and that in TikTok to me seems to be a lot less and because it's more controlled. And so maybe that's the reason that I'm thinking, you know, that I'm thinking as to why uh, China, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm, that's my thought as to why they're uh, banning it, which, you know, the U.S. at that point has the right to then do what they want. It's for their reasons. Yep. And the third thing that I was bringing up is effectively, kind of the negative of banning it, which effectively is the business impact, right? You're mentioning Facebook and how Facebook might have more kind of content or where it's bots or fake accounts or whatever following you just to create numbers and that kind of stuff. Whereas that hasn't really happened in TikTok or not that we know of, it hasn't happened in TikTok. So businesses would feel that their advertising or their presence on TikTok is a lot more relevant because there's a lot more real users on it, right? So I feel that the negative of banning it is the potential marketing impact. I know a lot of influencers have gone on TikTok. They're getting good reimbursements. They're making some good money on it. So we are necess- we, we could be impacting their business as well. And so it's not all necessarily good. There is some negative to banning it as well. Um, and, and that's just kind of my take on, on businesses um, as well, that it, it's tough, right? Now... I know there's many business owners that want would want to chime in. Kira, you've had many businesses in the past. What's your thoughts on the impact of marketing when it comes to the TikTok ban? So, for myself, it's again, like I said, I don't use it enough. Now, there's I have a the acai bowl place, Simply Fruits, and the people that work here, the employees uh, are much younger, and so they've mentioned many times that you know. You should market on TikTok, market on TikTok. Now, we've been doing it on Instagram, which then I believe pushes out to uh, Facebook also. But I just never got myself to want to put it on TikTok. And again, I think the potential is there. The the reasoning is there. The uh, growth could be there, but um, is something that I just never use. So now I'd have to sit there and learn it. Some of them have said they'll do it for me. But what's crazy to me is and this thought came to me earlier this week i went to a dentist uh, for the first time in new jersey um, because i was going to maryland before phenomenal dentist everything was great high tech all of that they have an instagram account so i follow the instagram account and it's not and it's not just him multiple dentists uh you know there's a uh, home inspector in like nevada somewhere that i've watched 10 years ago, you would have never thought any of these people would have to do the things that they do on Instagram or on social media to market their business, right? You never had a dentist, uh, for example, doing acting uh, in front of a camera to then promote their uh, practice. Um, You know, same thing with the Simply Fruits. I have to figure out how to promote it on a weekly basis on social media. It's not just about, you know, printing flyers or news articles or uh, you know putting stuff in uh, newspapers and then you know having people get that at home in their mail um, which is what how it used to be five ten years ago um, you know people in real estate they used to send out mailers now they're all on Instagram promoting their houses and it, it's a faster medium so that's the good part is that you know it, and it costs a lot less to promote on Instagram for me uh, doing simply fruits or even the construction business uh, is free. I don't really have to spend any money behind it. Um, And so it became a lot cheaper to market nowadays, but the things you have to do to get ahead of the other person is, uh, (laughs) it's a lot more, I don't want to, I don't want to say difficult, but it's a lot crazier what people are putting out there. Um, You know, Another dental practice uh, that we know, they're dancing in the office, right? Which, again, it's entertainment, 
and it makes you remember, you know, when you need to set an appointment that, you know, this is a place I may want to go to or somebody that's following for the first time uh, may remember them. And, uh, you know, it's right now it's there's so much stuff going on that the more you can be in front of people, they'll remember because there's so much competition, right? We in, in Jersey alone, I have two friends that have uh, two different dental practices and I had to decide which one to go to. <laughs> um, luckily for me, it was just distance. One is 10 minutes away and one is 45 minutes away. But for a lot of people that might live in the middle, you know, they'd have to figure out. And sometimes social media could be the, the thing that just kind of makes you want to go to one versus the other. Um, I, I so think a I, lot of it, a lot of it is about just getting your face out there. Right. Um, yep. And it's almost like kind of people like hearing things from the horse's mouth. So you see a flyer or you see an ad in the newspaper, or even a TV commercial, even if the owner of the practice is on the TV commercial, it's too scripted. It's too formal. You know, even we've learned that, you know, the feedback we've gotten is be yourself right on the podcast here. Yep. Um, so I think it kind of allows them to it brings them down to like a human level that people can understand. And I feel like marketing is effectively twisting in that. So you should be more comfortable, have that intimate relation with whoever you're working with. And so the the new trend of social media just kind of allows you to do that. Which brings to the point, you have an IT company and you do liquor stores. You need to get yourself on the front, in front of a camera and start doing some TikTok dances and maybe you'll grow your business. You and you and Yogan. <laughs> I will... Uh... I will dance, but I don't know if that'll help uh, our marketing or hurt our marketing. Trust me, um, it will help. It will help. <laughs> I, it, it, and I say that partly as a joke, but there are so many people that I think they're introverts that never would have thought they could become famous. But because you're in front of a camera by yourself, right? The good thing with a lot of these social media things is they don't have like a huge, for the most part in the beginning, a huge production. It's them and a camera or their best friend and a camera. And so it's easier for them to do the the dancing, the acting, the jokes, whatever it is, the pranks, because they're not in front of a huge, you know, it, like bunch of people that are holding a camera, holding a light, holding microphones, you know. Yeah, yeah. Make up people. And that's how people become huge. There's this kid, um, which I, I, I listen to him regularly now, uh, this guy, Hirsch Likari. We talked about him before. This other guy, Connor Price, that your sons, your kids know that you didn't have a clue about uh, because you thought Connor Price was not white. <laughs> um, Connor Price is a is a huge uh, Instagram guy, YouTube guy, and he was originally an actor and came into during COVID. Everything stopped for him. He wasn't getting any acting jobs. wasn't getting anything. And for whatever reason, his wife is like. You need to go back to your roots, which is, you know, making your own videos and singing. So he started Instagram and YouTube and he started doing his own thing during COVID. It would be literally him and his wife. His wife was on the camera and he was the one acting and it'd be him playing different parts. So one day he he, he got pretty huge. So then he saw this guy, Hirsch Lakari, who's in Punjab, I believe, and he's a maybe has like 100, 200,000 followers on Instagram and he does Punjabi rap and is so good that this guy found him and put him on one of his uh, videos. And the video grew faster than any of Connor Price's other videos, faster than anything else. And again, because of the population of India and popularity of this guy, um, that not only did Connor Price become bigger, Hirsch Lakari himself went from like 100, 200,000 to now, literally this week, over a million followers on uh, Instagram and his YouTube channel is just blowing up. He had one video and now he's got a bunch because obviously he can easily monetize on YouTube uh, with the amount of followers that he gained within seconds of this thing coming out. They have an official video. So, um, you know, it, it's for business, it's a huge thing, but it's making people entrepreneurs unintentionally right kind of like this kid um and many people that we see on youtube but it, it, it's you you have to grind through to get to that it's not like you know we started this um one day and out of nowhere where 
still doing it and i think we'll keep doing it until you know we get bored of it but as long as we're having fun which i think we are uh we're gonna keep doing I it think, and, um, you know, i think that the main difference is is that marketing back in the day was very formal so you needed that production and everything having raw yeah. unedited maybe not the most perfectly formatted situations it's okay and it's accepted now because it brings you down to uh, a different level um yeah. a level that maybe potentially uh, or potentially that people could adapt to right that's what i loved about connor price's stuff when my yeah. when my younger son showed me the connor price video and they were both both of the kids were there it was just like wow this isn't like a massive production or whatever yeah. he's just he has some simple stuff he's throwing it together and it's just raw and real and it's just pure talent and i think yeah, there's, no, there's an appreciation for that it's amazing the stuff he does and there's a lot of people out there but it just the fact that he found somebody in india and made that guy if you see where that kid is filming his stuff yeah it's like connor price is a cheap production and this is like a tenth of that right because it's yeah. a young kid i don't think he's like even 15 or 16 um with a an iphone 13 i think he says in one of the things and um recording these videos but his rap lyrics were, were pretty amazing and uh now he's going to be one he, he's to me he's the biggie of biggie of india is the way i see him when you hear it, it it's and we'll leave a link i think in the uh in the bottom of just uh one of the videos that uh i'm talking about because it, it, it's i listen to it every few days in the car um and it's it's a great video yeah no, um, that, that's impressive um what yeah, about what about do. the rest of your marketing aspects right so you're in construction as well right you have a construction company have you thought about getting on social media with construction so we have again in, we have the instagram um and we do uh have the facebook i haven't put as many images out there yet and now that we've kind of done this i have ideas to then maybe market some of that using even this platform so you know one of the ideas we have is to try to do different things with our platform so um, i'm hoping to be able to share some videos of construction down the line and maybe use that to market so i've done it on one side with simply fruits i haven't done it yet with the construction as much it's there there's a few pictures every once in a while i still throw something up can i do more yes 100 percent. and uh you know if simply fruits is at 80 percent my construction is at 20 percent using social media you're at zero so you need to catch up to whatever the hell i'm doing yeah we haven't really done any marketing um most of our on the it side it's all through referrals in all honesty which is great you know they're, yeah. they're they're good clients we love them but it's primarily been through referrals we really haven't had to market um but maybe it's something we do uh there's a lot to be spoken to when it comes to technology especially with like ransomware and and all that different stuff that's coming through and you know are you really protected what is your strategy and unfortunately in it there's a ton of seasoned folks who really may not fully understand what the latest and greatest technology is they are very smart but they're pigeonholed into a certain setup and a certain architecture and it's worked for them um and they kind of stick to it so we kind of pride ourselves in being more flexible staying cutting edge um learning new things and being able to adapt you know every day every quarter every year right but maybe i don't know maybe we do some uh takes on that as well um but, but with I that think... there's also there's also a lot of bad marketing that happens with social media and uh marketing in general right it's as much as i say there's a lot of good stuff there's 10 times as much bad stuff and so you got to kind of weed that out i'm gonna i'm gonna go off on a rant because there's so much bad marketing out there and from such large companies it's just not even funny right i honestly think and and all you marketing people out there i love you right but sometimes i just don't know what you're thinking and i've been in you know when i work for startup companies or even you know fortune 500 companies and they talk about marketing they try to make it this like this thing like you know like we're not selling our product we're selling a feeling you know we're not selling our product we're, we're selling an emotion you know and yeah all right so this is a perfect example right here so looking at cars and you look at a jaguar right this is their link to the jaguar f-pace interior gallery right so what do you think that is that to me that's supposed to tell me what does the interior of the car look like the first picture was useless this second picture is useless this might as well be my dining table right this picture is picture is useless who the hell is this person 
again, she might be great. Some people might think, oh, she's beautiful. Some people not. Whatever. I don't see myself driving this car or me understanding what the interior of the Jaguar F-Pace is. If I, if I buy it, she's not sitting in the front seat. I, I don't know what they're trying to get at, right? Over here. Again, I, I really don't care. I'm seeing stitches and some metal, right? Uh, keep going, right? Oh, look, I, I know it has a touchscreen, <laughs> but what car doesn't, you know? Yeah. So any just, car. <laughs> I am so annoyed at these marketing people and how they're just completely failing. Now, maybe I'm just naive or I'm immature in the industry and I don't realize that, hey, this stuff does work, but I just think it is flipping useless, completely useless. This is the only picture that kind of gave me an understanding of what the interior of the car looked like. But even then, you can tell their focal point was this woman, right? Um, and again, you had to get to this picture to see it, so I would have been bored at the first three, especially those blue color that they have. It's completely ridiculous. The lighting is all off, everything. It's like, I don't know what they're doing. Like, this just makes no sense. If you look at Super Bowl ads, right? There are one or two good ones, but if you go back to the 80s, the Super Bowl ads were hilarious. They were good, you know, either had a good message or made you laugh. Now this, like, it's just stupid. They're, like, going off of a feeling. You can't even tell what the ad is for until, like, you're all the way through and there's, like, a little thing at the bottom, you know, right before the lawyer's 20-minute uh, spiel on, you know, this product is going to kill you and is going to give you headaches and your fingers yeah. are going to fall off and everything. Lawyers have kind of ruined uh, uh, marketing and, and advertising and all that as well. And in all honesty, I don't think it's needed. If you're advertising a drug, right, all you got to say is like, hey, consult your doctor for more details. That is it. I, don't, I can't find anyone saying, you know, oh, it, it, they didn't say it might cause this or cause that and everything. And I listened to the ad and, and now I'm going to sue you as a result. I don't know. Maybe it's happened. And if it has, then the laws need to change because – you really need to understand what you're taking and your doctor is a professional. So maybe, yeah, you say like, hey, talk to your doctor for more details and to see if it's suitable for you. But some of these ads, like you see how fast they talk and it's just like, you know, blah, 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 blah. You yeah. can't even understand it. I don't know what the hell lawyers are thinking. I don't know what marketing folks are thinking, but they all need a reality check because I think AI is going to take them over anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did a whole... Uh video on ai and what it did to me um but i was reading recently that there is a lot of ai instagram pages uh accounts um which i figured was going to eventually happen but one company in uh spain took it to the next level um basically what they decided is um, and I'm going to show this article real quick because it, it's pretty interesting. An agency created an AI model who earns up to $11,000 a month because it was tired of influencers who have egos. Now, we're going to leave this up there for a minute because I'm sure you'd rather see that than us. But <laughs> just think about that. And I went to the Instagram. And in here, I know it says, it. you know, the, that Instagram account has like 125, 4,000 followers. And this was back in November. Right now, the account has over 300,000 followers. Now, the company that set this up, a Spanish agency, you know, the AI model has a name, AI Tana Lopez, um, and is actually making money. So it's kind of crazy to think about this could be the future of marketing. You don't have to deal with people at all anymore. Right. And even yesterday I was getting ready to we talked about simply fruits. I was getting ready to post something for uh, my business uh, that we're going to launch. And I went on to try to figure out, can I use AI to then just create this post instead of me actually having to put stuff on the table and take pictures of it and make a video and all that stuff. I can use AI to do that and save one ton of money, ton of time and uh, make it look probably even better than I can edit in uh, uh any kind of software. So it's crazy to think the amount of stuff that is AI is going to actually take over. Um, I know people are scared and it is what it is, but for businesses, they, if they have to make a choice like these people did, it's not a bad choice. Cause one, 
it worked, right? Yeah. And they don't, and unfortunately, models that many times have egos and they have a big cost. Yep. This probably didn't cost them anything to do. Make these yeah. because, like I said, the when we did our video, I paid forty dollars for a hundred images. This AI account, I think, only has fifty pictures up there. Yeah. So if they use the same software for forty dollars, they are now making eleven thousand bucks a month using this model, right? And then you they using those pictures on their own marketing stuff. So the amount of money they saved and made at the same time is, is huge. So, um, you know, it, it's crazy as to what AI is going to do. And we, I think we're going to be talking about AI for the next 10 years. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be learned from it. You can definitely leverage it. All those dentists and everyone that you're talking about, they should totally be using it, right? Because it's not just content that could be created on AI. There is marketing program strategy data analytics demographics all that stuff you can grab from it right so yeah. it'll really tell you what to work on what to what not to work on etc as well you know so there's there's definitely benefits what's what is gonna get worse is like for example this this account the you know there's already talks of you know objectifying men or women in advertising and all that stuff and how it impacts younger kids this is just going to get worse because now you're literally creating the most perfect looking guy or girl or whatever the heck else is out there. You're literally creating the most perfect version of that. And now you're having like these unattainable goals for teenagers growing up and that could spark into a whole other issue, you know, and it yeah. already has in the past when you see like billboards or ads and everything and they're saying, hey, everything is effectively becoming objectified because they're using a good looking guy or a girl to do the ads and everything that impacts everything. So this might take all that to the next level. And we might like, you know, 10 or five or however many years from now, we might start to see a lot of negative impacts on this in society as well. But there's benefits as, as like with anything, there's good and bad. Yeah. No, let's see. Cause whether you use AI to get the perfect person or you spend a lot of money trying to find the perfect model, that is going to be what you want. Uh, I think the human nature is going to dictate what is still on that screen. And, you know, I know people are trying to show different body types and everything, but it, I still don't think the the scale has been tipped enough. But uh, uh, there's still, like I said, we're going to be talking about this for, for a very long time. And as mentioned earlier, our guest for next week is somebody very special, um, a former cop in the Air Force and a carpenter and she 